Alright guys, so we need to talk about how we're going to mount things to the walls of the van because um, the levels of uh, transition from insulation to metal to wall that looks like a normal house wall is actually one of the hardest things that we have encountered in this van conversion so far. It is really difficult to work it out. I mean, and especially, for us, anyway. <laughs> and especially since you're working with such thin metal, which if you make a mistake, you're going to drill straight through your van. We thought that um, we'll just show you our preferred method of mounting things to the van. So anyway, let's talk about RevNuts. So what a rivnut is, is that it's a threaded bolt hole that you're able to thread regular bolts into without dropping them. And with these rivnuts, you can install them in pretty much most surfaces, but in metal surfaces, it's really good because it needs to be able to clamp on both sides of the material. But essentially, the way a rivnut clamps creates a much stronger way for you to thread your bolts through the wall rather than physically screwing into your one millimeter thick sheet of metal that your van comes with. Meanwhile, with a rivnut, because you are compressing the rivnut around the metal and bolting it through the rivnut tube into a significantly bigger surface area, especially since there are more threads for your bolt to actually thread into instead of the half a thread you'll get into the physical metal, like because it's only one millimeter. This is an uncompressed rivnut. Once it's compressed, which we'll show you in a minute, you put a bracket, you mount a bracket to it, and then you go and you thread the bolt in it. So the wall is here. The ribbon is compressed against it, the bracket is on the outside, and you just screw it in. And the really good thing about these rivnuts is that it allows you to create things in a modular way. So if you want to unbolt things and rebolt things multiple times with regular screws, you're probably going to ruin the metalwork behind. But with this, it's got a thread, so you just bolt it in, loosen it when you need, and it allows you to just take things on and off, switch things in and out without having to ruin the metal beneath. So let's install a rivnut to show you how it works. So depending on the size bolt that you're installing, so an M3, an M6, an M8, depending on the strength that you need, you need to get the appropriate size rivnut and the appropriate size head uh, for the rivnut tool. So let me show you. All right, so the tool that we got, which is uh, this one, it says it's a heavy duty rivnut tool, had, uh, had, had the full kit of the most uh, uh, common uh, bolt sizes. So what they look like, this is an M5, and uh, I can't even open a simple box. This is what a head out of the tool looks like, and this is one that's already installed so installed in there. So you take you take one out, you put the other one in. Um, we'll show you how, how to do that after we've installed the rivnut, because this is the right tool for the rivnut. <laughs> so depending on what size rivnut you're installing, you'll need to drill different size holes. For example, with our rivnut tool, it says that an M4 should have a 6mm hole, an M6 should have a 9mm hole, and an M12 should have a 15mm hole. Generally, these sizes are pretty standard, so you can just look them up if your tool did not come with an instruction manual. So we're going to be installing an M6 rivnut, which requires a 9mm hole to be installed. Got a nine mil drill bit. It might be a good idea to drill a smaller pilot hole first. So, with the hole drilled, we need to open the tool up all the way, then we can thread on the rivet nut like so, and then we'll just place it in the hole all the way down so it's flush and then once it's in flush all you do is squeeze the tool there we go that's squeezed all the way so when you're squeezing it will be tight but if it is excessively tight then stop because we accidentally broke one of the heads by squeezing too tightly it means it's not in properly right away that little piece is right there you see the broken bit that we can't get out yep yeah. Bye bye bit. So once you've done that, then you just need to unscrew the tool from the rivnut you've just installed by turning this knob. And that will unscrew the head from the rivnut. There we go. There you go, that's in. That's in. And then with the rivnut installed, you can thread the bolt into the nice hole. 
Right, so place that we're going to install some rib nuts is uh, right here. So this is our headliner shelf. We did a whole video on how we created it. However, um, even though this is 18 mil ply, we're noticing a little bit of, of a flex in it, which is normal. It's a big sheet of ply, but there's ever so slightly a little bit of flex. Probably not enough that it's going to cause um, a significant damage or it's going to look bad um, after it's been loaded for um, a year or two however nonetheless we don't want it flexing and we also need um, a plank to um, screw our cladding into so we're gonna basically kill two birds with one stone type of thing and we're gonna install uh, a supporting beam right here at the edge to serve these two purposes so to do that you know that bracket that we were using in the beginning? We need those. So yesterday we prepared this piece of wood and we painted it with the black chalkboard paint. I, don't know, I think we, you can probably use chalk on this, but nonetheless, that's what we had. Yeah. Okay, so basically this is what it needs to look like. The bracket needs to push up on the beam and then uh, uh, the rivet nut needs to be... Um, here holding the bracket in however as we said in the demonstration the rivet has to be flush with the surface you're installing it on however this is at an angle and naturally now we can either put a little piece here when installing the rivet to make it flush or we could try and bend the bracket <laughs> yeah it's bent so now that we've got the holes marked where we need to install the rivet nuts, we're going to be drilling a 5mm hole first as the pilot hole and then our 9mm hole mm -hmm. afterwards. And we've also got a magnet to catch any metal shavings that come off. And this is a good example of a really awkward place to install a rivet nut because the surface is not flat and straight, the uh, line of sight is not the best, but we're pretty sure we can get a rivet nut in there. Is that insulation? I think that's insulation. We put insulation. Ooh. Because this is not a test piece and it's inside the van, we're just going to use some anti-rust primer just to protect it. The primer's dry, we've got the rivet nut on the tool, and now we've got to get it, make sure it's flush up against the metal we're installing it on, which for the angle we're at, it's not the best. But there we go. Okay, I've got it. Yeah. And now I've got to keep it pressed up against the metal as I squeeze in. There we go. That's in. Well, something's in. There we go. Don't overdo it. No. There you go. That's up. The one thing you've got to be careful about when unthreading this is that you don't double thread the rivet nut, otherwise it's pretty useless. And when the rivet nut's in there, it's not coming out. <laughs> so you better have marked those holes correctly. Yeah, you've got one shot. There we go. Alright, so they've been bent. And that's the, them being a uh, dry fit now. So let's get the, the plank. Another useful rivet that we want to try out is to try and suspend our roof. Now we don't know whether that's going to work exactly and we will do a video specifically on that, how we're going to actually do our ce ceiling here. Uh, but what is good to do at this stage is to pre-position uh, rivet nuts on these ribs before we start insulating, before we put any sort of cladding on there. So we're going to do a quick demonstration how to install them in uh, in these ribs. Now it's important to mention that these ribs are not um, designed for you to like hang off them. Like if you if you let's say pull on them down, uh, that's not good for them. So whatever you hang out of these, it shouldn't be that heavy. They are only held in by uh, sealant and spot welding, which is not structural at all. Also try not to drill through the roof. That too. Drilling through the roof? Bad. In hindsight, Maybe you should have done the installation after. If you're wondering why you haven't seen us originally poking uh, the insulation is because we're holding that footage for the ceiling insulation. So I guess, spoiler, that's <laughs> how we did it. <laughs> Ow. 
screw the rib nut onto the thread. Put that right up against it, nice and flush and straight. Then close it down. There we are, one rib nut. So all the rib nuts that we've installed were M6 size, so we didn't have to change the head. But if you do need to change the head, then this is how to do it. So with the kit comes this tool. So step one is to remove this outer bolt from the rib nut tool. So close the tool, then you'll find the one that fits this bolt. You may need to flip it over or whatever. So you grip this so it doesn't spin, put the tool on and just loosen the bolt. And it should un wind off the tool, like so. Step two, if you look here, there's a metal channel inside this hole, and this is visible on both sides. What you do is you get your finger in and bring it down with your nail so that it's pressed and held downwards like that. So with that held downwards, you then have to unscrew this central bolt. So unscrew that, and that will come out. Pop that back in its box so we don't lose it. We're going to grab the M8 or whatever, size. or whatever size that you need. Okay, the side you want to put in the tool is the side that has this hex on it. You don't want to put this side up. You don't want to put it the wrong way. So to install it, we basically just do the reverse. So we have to again push this cylinder down. So you'll see on this cylinder there's a 12-sided hexagonal pattern. Now that's important to note because when you put this bolt in, it has to fall, this hexagon here has to fall within one of those 12 sides there. So you push this down, you'll put the bolt in, and you'll thread it onto the central bolt. Like so. And you need to make sure that the side cylinder comes up over the hexagon, like so. Make sure it covers it. So if it doesn't fit, make sure you loosen it or tighten it so that that hexagon fits within that 12-sided star pattern. So now that you've got that on, you just have to put the top bolt on. Make sure that you're holding this in the center because as you can see, it dances around. So if you grab it on the sides and keep it in the center, that way when you thread this on, it stays center so you don't double thread anything. So you can tighten that up and then you just grab the tool. It might be a different connection point than the one you loosened it. Just give it a tighten and that's ready to use. All right, so I hope that whole thing was helpful to you. If you have any other ideas of how to mount furniture or cladding to the walls of a van apart from rib nuts, then please let us know down in the comments below and we'll catch you next week.